the Ren Fair with everybody. Hi. Say hi. Hello. It's Micah and Minji and Aaron. If my camera will actually. No, we're dark. It's, it's too dark. There we go. <laughs> we are actually going to the Pennsylvania Ren Fair today. Uh, I will be going mildly in character. And we are going to try to do something different and not buy the entire Ren Fair. We're not going shopping today. We're not going <laughs> shopping today. We're going to do activities, as many activities as possible. Still spending money. Uh, that's still spending money, but we're not shopping. We're not spending it on items. We're going to spend them on memories. Capitalism, <laughs> Capitalism light. We're going to see how many, and we're also going to rank them. We'll have like a running list right here uh, based on, you know, where the group thinks it should go, if it's higher or lower than uh, the previous event. And then when you go to the Pennsylvania Ren Fair next year, you'll be able to try those too. We have a long drive ahead of us. We all have our Starbucks. Um, anyway, enjoy the montage. <laughs> good time, but despite being early, we're immediately greeted with a huge line. Did we feel a little like being at an amusement park like Bush Gardens or something? After such a long morning though, there was no argument about finding drinks as soon as we got inside. Then we settled at a table to do video intros. Okay, so we are at fair. We have gotten our drinks, nice and cold, first drinks of the fair. Everyone just kind of settling in, uh, going to the bathroom, uh, everything like that. It's been kind of a hectic morning, so taking a little bit of a break uh, before we even start. Okay. Come on in. Good. Hello. Look at Erin. She looks so good. First drink. First drink. <laughs> hey. So I just saw Minji do this. I take all of my YouTube secrets from her. So I'm gonna go do it now. <laughs> These were from eBay. This is from Orchard Corset, Thousand Rafts. You guys probably remember this. This is from NorCal Ren Fair. I don't remember the store I got it from, but it is really cool. It's got like a little Kraken on it. He's my buddy. Um, I made this. This is from Tyler Thrasher. It's just like my little bag that I'm using today. Uh, Amazon, Amazon, and Brian. And Dry Bones Emporium. Oh yeah, and Dry Bones. bones. Yes, right. you also remember these from last time. Dry Bones. <laughs> First thing on the list, go back to the entrance and find the King's Mint. Micah, what did you do? Uh, yeah. Okay, baby jail. Started talking about people's rights. Oh, not in this economy. I have two of them. Okay, so this is supposedly coin of the realm. At the Pennsylvania Ren Fair, we get these coins. Instead of taking cash everywhere, you can go and take a credit card up to the uh, King's Mint right here. And then you have these that count as $5. And you can use them anywhere in the fair. Uh, I think it's kind of cool. It actually even says PA Ren Fair. 40 years. Wow, which is pretty neat. I think I might keep one. The roommate tank was close by, and boy, was it cool. The cast treated it like an educational exhibit, where each mermaid had certain characteristics based on their natural habitat. So, first activity of the day, mermaid tank. Mm, I think I'm going to put it at a solid above average. So we're going on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say maybe like a 6 or 7 fins out of 0. <laughs> How many mermaid takes have you uh, rated? 
Well, if I said that, then I would have to kill our audience, and I need them for, <laughs> uh, you know, analytics or something like that. How about you? How would you rate the mermaid tank? 11 out of 10. 11 out Favorite of 10. Favorite part of PA. <laughs> Is that what you're going to say for all of them? Is that because I'm going to have you rank all of the things we do today? Oh no, this is actually my favorite part of the This is your game. favorite? Okay, perfect. 11 out of 10 nope, from Mindy. The bathrooms and mermaids are the only things that PA has got on Maryland. <laughs> That's it. Right. Probably a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Never seen anything like it. It's really It's scary. very true, yeah. But claustrophobia um, of being in that tank. But you're not in well, you're not in No, but I look at it and I think I could be. And then I'm like, oh god, I'm going to die. <laughs> Our group was stopped on the way to our next location by a friendly trickster NPC. He had a super fun personality, but the game we indulged him in took a bit long. Also, I might be biased because I didn't win. Early on in the day, we lost our friend Sarah, so we tried to meet up with her at her last reported location, the Absinthe Garden. Unfortunately, we just missed her since she went to find food, so the next best consolation prize was obviously more drinks. The line was really long here, but the rest was welcome because all of us are in our 30s, and honestly, I was already tired. What do you rank the, the drink experience at Pennsylvania Ren Fair? got a recommendation from another friend to go and watch the show Taming of the Shrews over at the Ball and Chain stage. She and I have similar humor tastes, so I had high hopes. The show was a drag show contest, but more a comedy skit than an actual drag show, which I probably would have enjoyed more. You could clearly tell who usually did improv and who did not, but the cast was very enthusiastic and generally had good chemistry. Just got out of Dreaming the Shrews. It is a drag show show that is playing at the Ball and Chain. And it was really funny. Uh, some of the jokes didn't really land very well. But um, I think overall it was a very great show and everybody was super enthusiastic about it. So I think I will give it a... Editing cell here. Upon further consideration, I am changing my rating of the show. At the time, I felt a lot of pressure as I was literally watching the actors leaving the stage as I was recording this, but now that it's been a few weeks and the performance has finally settled my brain, I have to admit that some of the jokes were incredibly tasteless, even for an 18-plus show. There were a few blatant references to suicide and school shootings that I was incredibly uncomfortable with. In addition, the show itself seemed to make fun of drag shows, but couldn't commit to the bit and do so in a way that I felt would resonate with the queer community. I'm not sure how much of the show is improv and how much is scripted, but either way, I'd recommend against watching it. I'm keeping a somewhat reluctant two points because the beginning of the show was excellent and the host is pretty talented. I am going to move my mermaid tank up to probably like seven and a half, eight. So we're going to try and do some other activities, maybe try and figure out where uh, Minji and Micah and Aaron are. We seem to have lost them and I don't know where they are. They're not answering their phone. So yeah. Hey guys, it's my friend Brianna. Hi. She works at Cane's and Abel and I decided to come say hi to her. Hello. What do you guys sell here? So we sell canes, carousels, umbrellas, staffs, walking sticks, uh, chupacas, uh, bummer shoes. <laughs> it's a shepherd's axe. A shepherd's axe? Mm -hmm. Over on that side. You never know what you're going to find in here. We have so many different antiques. We have new things. We have old things. We have things that are 200 or 2,000 years old and things we made on Tuesday because we were bored. So, Brianna, can you show me the coolest thing? The coolest thing in the store, in your opinion. My opinion. Oh, I got one. Okay. I'm going to teach you all a new term. This is called Frankentee. Why, you ask? Well, this part is from about 1750 to 1770. So this is older than this country. 
And this part, the silky canopy, is from about 1880. So someone refurbished this, put this together, both antique, so it's a Frank antique. Huh, Frank antique. For all the times I've been to a ride fair, I've never actually done a chugging contest. So, um, I have. Uh, uh, not at a ride fair. These, these lovely, lovely individuals have decided that to join me in, in my chugging contest. So I got frosted cranberry cider. October Pest. Also frosted cranberry cider. This stuff's delicious. My second glass. Alright. So, when, cheers, and then when Jess says go. fortune told was high on my list of things to do. The readers at Fortune's Favor were extremely friendly and professional, as well as genuine. As a divination reader myself, I could tell that they knew their stuff, and ended up giving me a frighteningly accurate and specific reading. After speaking with Aaron and Minji, their readings went the same way, and I was overall impressed by them. Absolutely worth it, even for experienced readers and spiritualists. I just got my fortune bread uh, with tarot cards over at Fortune's Favor. Right now, Minji is over there with Aaron and Micah. I think she's getting her fortune run. I really like this fortune. Guy was super friendly, very good at cards. I'm usually the one telling fortunes, so it was uh, interesting to kind of have my own fortune run. I think the last time I did was back at NorCal Red Fair like four years ago. <laughs> So uh, it, was, it was good. I really liked it. I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Menji, you got your fortune told. How was it? It was too real and I feel called out. It told me to stop doing things that other people want me to do and do things that make me happy, which is literally my entire life's conundrum as a first generation Asian. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10. No, it can't leave. 1 to 10. Um, like on a happiness scale, or on like a, wow, that was a good experience, or... On like, was it a good experience? experience? Was it a good experience? Was it worth 20 bucks? Oh, it was worth 20 bucks. Great. I would say like an 8 out of 10. No, it gets an 8 and a half out of 10, because it has to get at least a B to not fail the AB standard. There. <laughs> Okay, so I know I said I wasn't going to shop, but I didn't shop in the sense that I didn't peruse. I went in knowing that I wanted a wish bottle necklace from this cart, so it doesn't count. Anyway, this experience was super cute. You pick your bottle, a gem, make a wish, and fill the bottle with an oil of your choosing. I picked a wave to represent me moving to Japan, as well as some abundance oil.
window shopping where I swear I didn't buy anything. We went over to the big tournament grounds for the ultimate joust. Only to realize we were way too early. Right next to it was the archery range, which was way more involved than ones I've seen before and included a short class on how to use the bow. Points deducted because the class made the wait incredibly long. In terms of performances, the ultimate joust was the highlight of the entire fair. I've never seen a cash show so involved, complete with the entire royal court, a host of knights, fake blood, nearly hour-long play script, and yeah, those are pyrotechnics. The Halloween storyline is slightly different from previous weekends, and a little more dramatic from what I've been told. So if that's your jam, I highly encourage you to see it for closing weekend. We watched people outright slay each other on the tourney grounds, Merlin assaulting the queen, and giant golems attacking the court in an all-out battle. Overall, I was extremely impressed, and the only reason I'm deducting points is because if you weren't in the actual benches of the stage, you couldn't really hear anything. What snatches of dialogue I did catch were superb. Overall, we had a great time at the PA Ren Fair. There were a lot of activities we didn't get to try out, such as the fighting ring and rec room, mostly because of the long closing weekend lines. But that just goes to show how much fun you can have at a fair without buying things from the merchants. Really, this is the first time in a few years that I've stayed at fair until closing, and I had an absolute blast without ever feeling bored once. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below your favorite activity. Thanks for watching!